and welcome to the render settings overview for the output file in Blender. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about this output section for your render settings. Now it's pretty self-explanatory, but there's some pretty cool settings here that you can play around with that actually do a lot of different things. So first and foremost, the output path is pretty simple. It defaults to temp, which is your temp folder in the C drive. So let's go ahead and change this. Let's go ahead, you can go ahead and browse and I'm gonna put it on my desktop. So I'll just say desktop test render. And you know, you can define anywhere on your computer, but I'm just gonna do that for now. And you can see it automatically places your file path, C users, Dylan, desktop, desktop render, desktop test render. So that's the name of my file. Desktop test render will be the name of whatever file extension I choose. So right now it's PNG. We can change this file type to whatever we want. It can be PNG, um, JPEG, it can be an image sequence, or uh, it can be a movie file. So it can be AVI uh, or MPEG. So um, there's a lot of cool settings there. Make sure you check file extension so that it actually includes the .jpg or the .png or the .mov or avi or mp4 or whatever. Um, if you don't do that, it'll just end up not having a file extension at all. It'll still have the right codec, but you just you have to put that file extension on there to be able to open it up. So I do recommend checking this box. Um, this other checkbox here that says overwrite, this is a very interesting checkbox because it provides a lot of utility as well. Um, Basically, when you check overwrite, it allows you to re-render something and overwrite your previous render, which is very helpful because most of the time you don't want your previous render if you're re-rendering it, right? Um, so let's say you render out something. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and try it right now. Let's go ahead and I'm going to set this to uh, 10 frames so I don't overload my desktop with a bunch of files. But I'm going to go ahead and hit Control F12 to render the animation which should render out 10 different frames of this cube here. And they're gonna be identical because I haven't actually done any animation on them or anything. But you will have 10 different frames, 10 different images uh, that are saved out onto my desktop. And they'll be PNG files as we defined here. And they should have alpha to them as well. So we'll test all these things. This is RGB versus RGBA. RGBA simply has an alpha channel. So if you want transparency, you're gonna to wanna to render out RGBA. That's very important. Um, oh yeah, so we're done rendering. Let's go ahead and go into my file explorer real quick. So if we just go to my desktop folder now, you can tell I don't have anything on my desktop, so that's why it's so clean. But um, it's uh, basically just these 10 images. So we'll just open this up. And because it's black in the background, that's just taking the default background of the Windows Photo Viewer. Um, that means the transparency is working because the sky is actually something like gray or whatever. So um, especially with the white background in the thumbnail that means the transparency is working so we have transparency working because of RGBA and we also have all 10 different frames rendered as PNG files and my, let me just double check their file extension real quick and yes it looks like they're PNG so we already know for the record that the past 10 images that we just rendered are all identical because we didn't do any animation so we know that and so if anything changes we're gonna have uh, you know it's gonna it's gonna stick out so let's go ahead and animate this real quick I'm just gonna move this over here Press I, lock, rot, scale. We'll go over animation later on. And then go to the end of this. Go here, I, lock, rot, scale. So that will give us a short little animation that looks like this. <laughs> uh, very complex, I know. It's a masterpiece. So we're going to go ahead and render this out now. And I have overwrite checked. So uh, let's go ahead and hit F12, Control F12. And that will render it out for us. Now, because we have overwrite checked, this should overwrite all 10 of our previous images and give us a new sequence of images that has the animation. So we're gonna check that, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and go to my desktop folder. And as you can see here, these cubes are now no longer identical to each other. All these images are slightly different because it's animating. And by the way, if you ever want to view your animation uh, and play it back as an image sequence, all you have to do in Blender is hit Control F11, and that will actually play your animation as a movie from your image sequence. So it's very, very helpful to have this is a Blender player. If you want a general overview of how Blender player works, just click and drag across the thing for the timeline and then press spacebar to play. And that's basically it. Um, but yeah, it's a very helpful thing to preview your image sequence. But as you can see, we have the animation there. Now let's go ahead and uncheck overwrite. Then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the cube and put it here or something like that. Uh, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Alt-I to get rid of the keyframe there and uh, go to the end. Alt I get rid of that keyframe as well, and then just put it in the middle. Just put it in the middle there. Um, now it should look like this, right? So we'll do that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and also make this uh, 15 frames, just so we have a few extra frames in the back. I'm gonna go to the end, 
and uh, move this just a little bit, get something interesting going on. And as you can see, we have just sort of a zigzag pattern there. Now, once we render this and I uncheck over right here, I'm gonna go ahead and render that with Control F12. And you'll notice it actually starts on frame 11. So it skipped all the frames one through 10 because it registered that there was already files with those names of, you know, desktop test render 001 desktop test render 002 those were already detected so they didn't want to overwrite those and so therefore just skipped them and started rendering at frame 11. so now if we go to my desktop folder you'll notice that there's only five new frames and the other frames were not overwritten they're just the same as before so that's what the overwrite button does it sort of detects whether or not the file exists and if you don't want to overwrite them then you uncheck the overwrite button moving on we also have a placeholders checkbox and this checkbox is pretty interesting i'm going to have to show you what it looks like from the file explorer standpoint let's go ahead and go to the desktop folder again and then i'm just going to delete everything for now just to make sure we have an empty folder first and then i'm going to go ahead and make sure placeholders checked and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control F12. Now, while this is rendering, let's go to the desktop view, and you'll notice that every time it's already started the render, for example, it's on frame three, it, order, it already creates a file for that frame that it's working on. That's what a placeholder is called. So typically files take a really long time to render. Right now it's considerably fast because it's a very simple scene. But as you can imagine, once it gets really complex, a file could take up to a few hours to render. During those few hours, whether or not it has this file here existing matters for some things. So if you want there to be a file there with the correct name and everything that exists before the file actually finishes, then you want to check placeholders. If you don't have this checked, it'll actually only create the file after the image is finished with the render. So just a quick tip, if you turn on placeholders and turn off overwrite, you can actually have two computers, two or more computers render into a shared folder and they will sort of alternate which file is going to render which frame. And it's very helpful for creating a local render farm or something like that. Um, and yeah, that's just a quick tip. You don't have to worry about it now, but it's just a nice thing to know. Now we also have this checkbox called cache result. Cache result means that it saves out the render cache to an EXR file in a temporary location so that the compositor, whenever you render something, works a little bit faster when it's really, really heavily composited. So if you have a, the node editor um, over here, we'll just go ahead and open up the node editor real quick to show you. Uh, the node editor has compositing. You can actually use nodes. You have a bunch of render layers here maybe, and you might be like, oh, I want to add a blur or whatever. Now, if you have a bunch of this stuff and you have a really, really complex node set up for what you want to composite at the end, it could take a really long time to composite the scene after it renders, which is usually what it does. But if you click cache result, it will actually speed up that compositing process at the end. But it does take a little bit more space on your computer. It's up to you. But yeah, let's go ahead and close this out real quick. And let's see what else we have. We have color depth. You can do 16-bit or 8-bit. And then compression, of course, is up to you. Amount of time to determine best compression. Zero is no compression with fast file input, but has a much larger file. 100 is maximum lossless compression with slow file output. So it takes a little bit longer to output the file, but it does make the data a lot more efficient. So that's up to you how you want to compress it or not. Now, before we finish the overview, I want to go over how the movie files work. Once you do something like a movie file, you'll notice that there's an encoding section that pops up. This wasn't there before. That's because this is specifically for movie files and you can do stuff like, you know, the codec should be H.264, uh, for example. Um, you can do the output quality, you can do the encoding speed. And uh, you can also do presets. You have a bunch of different things here, H.264 and MPEG-4. So this can be, the container can be MPEG-1, MPEG-2, QuickTime, whatever. So this is a really helpful thing to have uh, when you're determining what kind of movie file you want to output as. So yeah, that's the basic overview for the output section for the render settings in Blender.